amazingly, it was three years ago today. How about that? Three years ago today that Yair Rodriguez pulled off one of the craziest, most unbelievable knockouts against Chan Sung Jung with a minute, excuse me, a second left in the fight. One second, four minutes, 59 seconds of the fifth round, the, what was it, 25th anniversary show? Three years ago today. How about that? He's now joining us, kind enough to join us, the one and only Yair Rodriguez, El Pantera. Yair, como estas? Muy bien. Y tú, Ariel, how are oh, you? Oh, muy bien. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Long time no speak. Long time no speak, bro. Uh, I guess we didn't have much to talk about. You know, it was kind of off. Uh, but now we're back at the horse, right on the horse, and we're ready for Saturday. Yes, massive, massive fight for you on Saturday against Max Holloway. Could I ask you, Yair, why haven't you fought in two years? Why has it been so long since we saw you? More than two years at this point. Yeah, I guess um, before my sus- I was trying to fight before my suspension in September. Mm-hmm. Um, that that couldn't happen because of an injury, and then right after it was the injury. Uh, it was the injury, and then right after it was the suspension from September to March. I was hoping to fight March. Uh, my suspension ended March seventh, and I was hoping to fight in that month. It couldn't happen. It couldn't happen in June. It couldn't happen in July because of Max Holloway uh, got injured. And then uh, you kind of move forward to today, you know, to this day. So this is uh, that was basically, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been an unbelievable amount of time since we've seen you, especially coming off that great fight, that great win over Jeremy Stevens. The suspension that you're talking about is the whereabouts suspension from USADA. Could you explain? Because even then, I tried to to reach you and and do an interview with you, but uh, it was hard to track you down. Could you tell us what happened there? Yeah, I mean, I guess I didn't want to do anything at the moment because I didn't want to make it bigger than it was. It was a simple mistake. I'm not doing anything um, pro hybrid, and like I'm not using any any substances or anything that can help out um, uh, my performance. Uh, and I knew people was going to think uh, something like that, but I didn't care. You know, uh, basically what happened was um, so we have an, a, a app on our phone. We gotta sign in. And then we wanna we, we have to tell you Sara where we're gonna be. Um, every time that I change location, no matter when I'm gonna stay or when I'm training or physical therapy or anything like that, you gotta say where you wanna be because if they come and test you and they don't they don't um, they just knock at your door, it's like a surprise, you know. And what it happens to me is like I'm a nomad. I'll call myself a nomad. I'm always moving from one place to another. You guys have seen that, it's not a surprise. And uh what happened was that I was just not, um, you know, being, I'll say, enough professional, I guess, uh, or I just forgot. I wasn't, I wasn't conscious of uh, just updating and updating and updating every time that I move. I just kind of lost track of it, and then I accumulated uh, three, uh, you know, three strikes, and that led to a suspension of six months. But um, that was it. Did it bother you? You know, like when you hear USADA suspension, this and that, people are thinking, oh. He's doing, you know, PDs, or he's escaping them because he doesn't want to get. To, did it bother you that people were saying that? Oh, not to my friend. Oh, right look here. at that, jeez, okay. Louise. It's okay. Oh my gosh, wrong. wow! I saw. A oh, not to I mean, man, <laughs> is this the best shape of your career? Yeah, I think it's, it's one of the best shapes in my career. Like, um, I feel like a little, um, like my body finally is like growing. You know, I'm I'm transitioning from a young uh, guy to an adult. I'm in that process of my life. I'm, I turned 29 last month, so I can see it on my on my body, uh, my way of thinking uh, as well, and uh, I'm just ready, you know, I don't care whatever, whoever people, whatever people wants to think, wants to say, I don't care, I'm not here for that. You know, I know what I'm capable of doing, and uh, I know what I, what I am, and uh, that's it. I'm happy with that. <laughs> now, before we get to the Max fight, there were a couple of times that it looked like they were trying to book you versus Zabit, and everyone was very excited about this, but it seems like you versus Zabit is kind of like Tony Ferguson and Habib. It just feels like the world doesn't want you guys to fight each other. How frustrating was all of that? It was, uh, I would say it was pretty frustrating because uh, I really wanted to fight him, you know, especially with uh, everything that was uh, said. And having the, having the contract signed and, and all that and then uh, injuring myself, it was just frustrating, you know, because I really wanted to fight him. Um, it couldn't happen, I guess, destiny or whatsoever you want to, or whoever you want to call it. But uh, the fight didn't happen. 
Uh, I don't know what he's up to right now. I don't know what he's doing, if he's doing good or not, but I just wish him the best. I have nothing uh, towards the guy. And I hope he can uh, figure out his business, his stuff, so he can keep on continuing with, with his career on his pay, on his best way possible. Yeah, uh, we don't even know if he's going to fight again. It's a it's a big mystery with him as well. Then we get to Max, and you were booked to fight him in mid July, and then he has to withdraw. In your mind, did you want to just stay and fight someone else? I know there was some talk of maybe you staying. I know Giga Chikaze was talking about like, did you did you consider that, or you wanted to wait for Max? No, it like it doesn't. It doesn't even make sense. Like for uh, for me to fight somebody like him or any other guy, it, it's not. It's not specifically him. Like you gotta remember this. This I'm. I'm not against anybody in specific. You know, if you have a problem with me, then we'll have a problem. But if not, I don't have problems. And uh, I'm looking to fight the best guys in this world. Max Holloway is one of the greatest in the history. That that's it, you know. It's uh, I want to prove myself against one of the best, and I will say no to a fight. You know, if we have to fight on the street or, or whatever, well, we'll do it. You know, but talking about sports, like this is what's best for my career, and I will take the best uh, decisions for my career, uh, or what my team thinks is best for me. And we think uh, Max Holloway is a great, huge step for my career, and um, that's all my focus right now. I have no one else in mind. Uh, Max told me on Monday that they told him he could wait for a title shot. He didn't want to wait. He wanted to stay active, and so he, of course, agreed to fight you. Were you surprised that he didn't take the title shot, that he took you? No, I wasn't surprised. I was happy. I was really happy. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to get the fight, you know, because this is a really important fight. And uh, whenever he got injured and then my management team talked to me, he said, like, hey, he, he's going to be maybe out for six months to a year. So I was like, okay, if he's six months, I'll wait for him. But if he's a year, I don't think I'll, I'll wait either. You know, he didn't want to wait. Uh, he got injured and then he, he decided to keep this fight. And I decided to not move away. Like, let's, let's just keep the plan as, uh, as it was and let's just make it happen. And that was it. To be out for two years and to jump back in there against Max who, you know, had that close fight recently against the champ, Volkanovski. He could be the champ right now. That's a, that, I mean, that's a, a tough task, right? I mean, you're jumping right into the deep end. You're not going into the shallow part of the pool and jumping in. There wasn't any part of you, or maybe your team was like, oh, maybe we should fight someone who's a little bit lower ranked, and then we get to Max. We already know how to swim, so let's <laughs> swim. I love let's it. Swim deep waters. I like it, you know. Uh, I've been... Um, I've been putting myself in some situations, scenarios, um, bad scenarios, and um, all what I can think of is just growth, growth inside myself, uh, outside, uh, outside myself, my body, my mind, and uh, you know I don't, I don't really care about anything. I don't, I don't care about winning. Except a specific, this final specific, uh, I just wanna see what I'm capable of doing after this layoff of two years and after being trained for so long because I've been training for this, uh, for this fight or any other fight for so long. And uh, I just want to see my, my improves. Well, what, have I, what have I improved in this time and what it needs to be improved? This is more than anything for myself, you know, for my growth. Uh, Max Holloway is going to be a great teacher. You know, for me, it's going to be, it's going to be great because he has all this experience that I will be able to absorb that night. And my career is just gonna, it's gonna take, it doesn't matter what happened, I don't care. Like, I don't care what happens. I, I'm just gonna go there and keep my all as always. And that's what you guys will see, fucking, a true fucking warrior, two fucking warriors uh, getting to, to fuck each other up, and that's it. But when you say you don't care what happens, like, you don't care if you win or lose on Saturday? No, of course, I'm, I'm going to win. Like, I'm, okay. I'm for the win. Nobody goes in there, like, thinking yeah. he's going to lose. But I don't care, like, what I mean is I don't care. Like, if I, if, if I lose, I won't. Uh, I won't take it like hard on myself. I know. I know it's a, uh, a tough opponent. It's a. It's a hard task, and uh, I know I'm putting. I put myself in a situation where I need to outperform him. You know, and I like to put myself in those situations. Uh, I've been telling this uh, in these in, in interviews, and uh, you know, right when you are scared to jump, that's when you jump. Right, so I jumped. Uh-huh. <laughs> I jumped in the deep waters. I jumped out of the airplane. You know, and that's what I did. Now I think uh, I'm mature enough. I have enough fights in the UFC, and I think uh, this this is gonna be a good test for him as well. You know, because I don't think he has ever fought somebody like me, and uh, we'll see what happens Saturday. But I'm sure it's gonna be a nice fight. 
Did you miss fighting? Yes, I love it. I love fighting, you know, but I'm, I'm okay with uh, taking some time off. I like to keep my body a rest, my mind a rest, a, a reset, restart, uh, because all that information, all that stress is accumulating in there, all those punches, uh, weight cuts, all of that, injuries. So sometimes it's, it's good. It's good. You know, it was, a, it was good. I didn't want to stay out that long, but uh, at the same time, it was good. It was a hard time, a time of growth. That's the way that I see it. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be good for me to, to be out a little bit and then come back fresh with some fresh ideas, fresh air, and uh, just keep on going on my career. By the way, you mentioned growth a couple times now. Uh, there was a period a few years ago, there was a lot of drama, right, in your career. Do you feel like that is all behind you? Do you, do you seek a, a life and a career now that is drama-free after you know, all the stuff that happened a few years ago? I don't think I don't think life will always be drama free, <laughs> right. especially in this sport, uh, right. to be honest. But uh, yeah, I think I think um, that's back there. You know, I'm here. I'm just here to fight. I'm here to win. I'm here to do the best version of myself that I, that I can possibly be, and to become the champion one day. You know, but first of anything, I have Max Holloway in front of me Saturday, and I can lose focus of that, and that's it. That I have to say, he's a great fighter. I respect him. I have nothing to say bad about him. Only good things. And I just hope he's healthy, mentally prepared, because we're going to war. He calls himself the best boxer in the UFC. He's very proud of this title. Do you agree with him? He may be. I don't care. This is not a boxing match. This is an MMA match. match you know? uh, he, he will be. And I will say probably I'm the best kicker in the UFC history as well. But that doesn't mean anything. You know, we fight in MMA, you know, fucking boxing or taekwondo. <laughs> uh, and just curious. You know, this is how you earn a living, right? Two years without making money in the UFC. Was that difficult for you? Uh, to be honest, not that much. You know, I've been smart with my uh, with my money. And I've been saving my money for my career. I invested my money, um, helping out my family as well. And now everybody has a source of income, even if it's not too much. But uh, now, now we're kind of uh, fine. We set up, not like before. We didn't have anything basically. And now everybody's like kind of working their, their way up. My brother, my sister, my mom, my family. Plus I have a huge team on my back. You know, uh, my sponsors, they've been like essential for my, for my life, especially the last two years, because they've been so supportive of me. And every, anybody else will say like, fuck you. You know, I don't want you anymore. You're not, not doing anything for my brand, but these guys are just there for me, uh, for whatever I need. And, uh, you know, I send, um, uh, big rewards to my, to my sponsor, uh, the Signum Mescal. And uh, I'm really happy to be with him. And uh, where's home for you now? I'm a nomad. I know. I was wondering, <laughs> <laughs> like, do you live in the state? Do you uh -huh. train out of Mexico or do you train out of the States? Mm, I train. Um, so let's say a part of my training camp, um, I was in Costa Rica for like two or almost three weeks, you know, helping out my, my training partner for his fight. And I was training with another friend from there. Uh, and then... We went to Mexico City for like 10 days to my friend's fight. And then right after that, we went to Chicago, three weeks. And then I had to work on my working visa because in all this process of fighting, uh, my working visa was expired. So I had to go redo all that process. Went to my hometown, waited for like two weeks, and then went to Mexico again, trained there for another week or so, high altitude. In the we went to the mountains and then... Uh, we came all the way from there to Las Vegas. We've been here two weeks. And that's been basically the most of my training camp. Those are the places that I was. If, when you win on Saturday, should you be fighting for the belt next? Yes. Yes, I don't, I don't think there is nobody else that, um, that, I can, um, that I can call for a title shot, you know. But, you know, first is first. First thing that has to be done, yes. the weight. And then the fight, and then we'll talk about that. But for now, all what's on my mind is just making weight, being relaxed for the next couple of days, and just do my job Saturday, and that's it. How is the weight cut? Perfect. It's been okay. great. You know, been, uh, I have people near me that has been helping me out with all that, uh, especially in the um, in the UFCPI. We have a lot of people there uh, helping us out uh, to stay healthy, especially with n nutrition and all that. And I have a chef working uh, with me that's been cooking all my meals. And, uh, you know, I have a pretty good team around me. Everybody's uh, taking care of me. Everybody's worried about, about me. What am I doing? Everybody's pushing really hard because 
everybody wants me to win. I want to win. Every, everybody on my team, everybody on my family, my friends, they want me to win. That's why they all, all of us would push each other. And uh, I think we have created something great in here. I'm going to keep on pushing, pushing that. Yeah. And just curious, have they told you or your team you went on Saturday you're getting title shot? Uh, I think it was in the conversation before. You know, but anything can happen in this sport. It, sure. it, even, if you, even if I win, uh, I could not get it. You know, you never know. Yeah. Things are just like that. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm not even thinking on that. I don't, I'm not worried about it because I know anything can change, you know, and, and, uh, and that's it. I'm, I'm, I want to, I want to go there and, uh, perform as never before. I'm really excited because it's been a layer of two years, but I also been training and, and stuff, you know, being more solid and, and my body growing it, you know, and doing more exercises and stuff. And, uh, I'm just excited to see where, uh, where my hard work takes me. By the way, did you remember, did it cross your mind? That three years ago today, you pulled off that uh, that incredible elbow against Zombie. I, I didn't. I didn't remember all day. I was. Uh, I didn't put attention. You know, like that's for me. Uh, with all respect, just another fight. I know it was a great knockout and everything, but it was a, a fight. You know, there is another greatest uh, great knockouts and fights. Uh, and then I got into the PI and I did an interview in the canvas where I fought. You know, I was pretty. It was pretty good to to kind of uh, have a, a reminder. You know, a nice reminder of what a war is like, and um, you know, especially your attitude, how how you come in this fight week. Your attitude is almost everything. You know, uh, how you take it. Yeah, you wanna be fucking sad. Are you gonna be uh, stressed? You know, I've been going to uh, through a roller coaster of emotions. You know, uh, coming uh, through this fight close to this fight, but I think I'm, I'm leveling up all that, all that craziness, everything is like, is start to settle down. And I start, I start feeling like more calm. And to be honest, like a lot of people doesn't believe that I'm going to win this fight. So that takes a lot of pressure out of my shoulders. And uh, you guys will see, you know, I don't have, you guys know, I don't, I don't talk too much. I don't say too much. I just show you guys what I can do. And uh, you guys will see, you guys will see what I'm capable of doing. And I'm sure you guys will be surprised. By the way, why the roller coaster of emotions leading up to this fight? Just thinking about everything, you know, thinking about everything that happened uh, on the last on the last couple of years, you know, uh, like all the people that I have lost recently, friends, family, and um, all the all the hardships, you know, like I was saying, like time off, injuries, and living with all these different situations and scenarios of life and uh, I think that's it, you know? I think you gotta, you gotta understand that you gotta keep on moving forward no matter what happening to your life. You gotta always take it. Uh, you gotta see the good side on, on, on the things and then you just keep on moving forward, keep on moving forward and then everything else will be fine. I understand and I also, um, <clears throat> excuse me, completely respect if you don't wanna talk about it, but I understand that COVID hit your family very hard. It, yeah, it did, it did, yeah and um, not, nothing can be done, bro. Like nothing can be done. I can't, I can't say anything that is going to uh, make anybody feel better about the situation. You know, uh, the only thing that I can do is, is go and hit my heart up there in that cage, uh, and honor, uh, the people that leave this world. And, uh, they had an illusion on me. They had an illusion of me winning of me becoming a champion. And I, I don't want to let nobody down, especially my family, especially myself. Could I ask how many family members you lost? Yes. Five. Wow, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Did, did you did you get it as well? Yeah, I get it. I got um I got it in December, um, December um, last year it was like year? yeah last year December last year. And how was like it? December. Th how was your experience with it? Bye. Bye. <laughs> fuck! I fucked me up. Yeah, it fucked me up, and I'm I'm an athlete, you know, and it truly fucked me up. Uh, it took me to bed. Uh, then uh, the temperature, and I had uh, like I was getting DC, uh, chills, no eating. I lost I lost a lot of weight. Hard time to sleep. Uh, uh, pain on the head like the whole time. It never went away. Not even with uh, with Tylenol or anything like that. I didn't, I didn't took anything. Basically, used teas and Tylenol, and uh, I quarantined myself. And I just took it. You know, I took it. It was it was pretty hard. But um, I get out of it. No, no, not all the people are lucky. Yeah. Did you have to go to the hospital? 
it's a tough sickness. No, I didn't. I didn't want to go hospital. I just isolated myself. Okay. And do you feel any like your lungs? Do you feel any ill effects from it? No. No. To be honest, uh, at the beginning, yeah, because uh, it's like you gotta stop. You you can do nothing for ten days, but. If you ask any other athlete, if they stop for 10 days and then they come back to train, it will be hard. You know, you still train three days and then you're like, oh, fuck. You know, so yeah, it was a little hard, but I started building all, uh, all that up uh, where the point where I'm not worried about it anymore. It was a long time ago and, uh, you know, I'm ready. And I understand you recently bought a, uh, a lumber business for your family. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working on that for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, it's a small business. It's not, it's not something huge, but I was like, I was telling you, one of my main, uh, ideas of helping out my family was my coach told me this long time ago, uh, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for one day, teach the man how to fish and you'll feed him for life. Mm. I'm not saying with this, I'm not saying that, uh, I'm teaching my family how to fish. They already know how to do it, but I just put, I just give them the, the tools to do it because we didn't have them. And uh, now everybody is working on, on their, you know, their stuff. And um, that's what I wanted, you know, have, have my family, keep my family the, the opportunity of, of freedom, uh, not being hooked to a job where they have to go from certain hour to certain hour, but being the, the owners, uh, entrepreneurs of their own businesses. And uh, that's, that's what I did. You know, that's what I, I, I was trying to do. And uh, I'm, as I will repeat, this is nothing huge, but this is nothing that is going to give me millions, but uh, it's something that is going to help all my family to keep, to keep uh, on a living, you know, everybody can feed themselves from there and we can travel and stuff like that, you know, uh, but I'm going to keep on working on, on more and more and more. Uh, my mind is, 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 I think it's business orientated. Uh, I guess you have to change a couple of things, but uh, um, I like, I like businesses and I like investing my money instead of uh, just spending it in crazy, expensive clothes, cars, all that, because I know my career is going to, it's going to end at some point. So it could be young, it could be older, but it's going to, it's going to end. And, and, and I, I don't want to get the same um, a, approach to the money that I have right now. I won't receive the same amount of money that I'm receiving right now. And that's what I'm trying to get um, the, to the point where I can um, make out a living without fighting after I'm done. That is very smart and very mature of you. I remember, I think one of the first times I met you, you told me, I think uh, after the fight in Mexico, you had something like $800 to your name. Do you remember that? After- uh, Yeah, 400. 400. Like less than 400. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Le yeah, so less than 800. So you've come along with- my coach. I wasn't even paying rent. I was living with my coach and I had that to eat. So if anything happened, I, I was done. I was gone. I was- oh my God, what a story. How, was, do, how do you win on Saturday? How do I win on Saturday? KO or submission. Oh my. Early, late? What are you, what are you envisioning? Mm, no, I think it will be uh, not, I, I think it will be really hard in the first round because we'll be really sharp in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but as long as the fight goes and then I keep, um, I keep on reading his movements and I just gotta time it. Read it like a book and then time it and it will be perfect, you'll see. So good to see you again, Yair. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Um, again, I'm really, really sorry to, to hear what happened to your family. I'm glad that you are okay, that you're healthy again. And it's so great to see you back inside uh, the UFC, back in the Octagon on Saturday. And what a fight this is. You know, I feel like enough people aren't talking about this fight because it's coming off of 268. But this is a fantastic main event. It's going to be great. It's going to absolutely deliver. And uh, you have always delivered. So I really appreciate the time. Thank you for doing this. Good luck on Saturday, and uh, I wish you all the best, my friend. Thank you, Roy. It's always great talking to you. Thank you for your time, and uh, I'm sure we will be talking uh, sooner. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you so much for the time, Yair. All the best. Thank you, guys. There he is, El Pantera. Wow.